So I'm going to show you how to use the integrating factor method to solve differential equations in this form. That is, first order linear differential equations. Now technically this method does not have a name, but I'm calling it the integrating factor method because it involves an integrating factor. But you should know that there are lots of different kinds of integrating factors designed for solving lots of different kinds of problems. So here we have a P and a Q. P and Q cannot be functions of Y. They can be functions of X, they can be constants, or they can be zero. And this method will work in all of those cases. Now, if Q is zero, this method is not necessary. There's an easier way to do it, something in this format, you can solve using the method of separation of variables, and I've got a video on that you can check out if you're interested. Similarly, if P is equal to zero, this method is also overkill. All you need to do to find Y here is to integrate Q. This isn't even technically a differential equation at all. So how do we do this? Well, there are two approaches. First, I'm going to call the formula. Second, the procedure. If you've got the formula, you can just substitute things into the formula and solve. You don't need to know anything about the procedure. Now, if you've got a differential equation that you need to solve right this minute, I would suggest you skip ahead to where I talk about the formula, and if you look at the description down below, you'll see the timestamp for this. Now, the formula does have its drawbacks, which is why many people prefer to do the procedure. I'm going to show you the formula and do an example. I'll show you the procedure and do an example there. And I'm also going to show you how the uh, formula and the procedure are connected. Most textbooks present this in the opposite order of how I'm doing it. They start with the procedure, and then they use the procedure to derive the formula. So let's see about that formula. So there's the formula. What a mess. You've got integrals inside of integrals. You've got integrals in exponents. This term that I've highlighted in red is the integrating factor, which I'm going to talk about when we do the procedure. But for now, this is just another piece of this whole formula. Now, what you should not do is just substitute in P and Q and go for it, because you're going to get a huge mess. Instead, you should tackle this piecemeal. Start with this P integral, solve that, and then write out this exponential expression with the Q, do this uh, blue integral next, and finally multiply by this green term. And of course, you don't need to repeat this integral. You already know what the answer to that is. Notice that this blue integral has an integration constant. That's absolutely necessary. On the other hand, these red and green integrals do not have integration constants. You should not add integration constants there and there. I'm sure you've heard that you're always supposed to add integration constants to indefinite integrals. But if you add an integration constant here, you have to add the exact same integration constant there. And that's not obvious. And then when you work through the algebra, eventually the two constants will cancel out, and you'll end up with the same answer that you would have had if you had just not bothered. So don't bother. I believe this ambiguity with these integrals is one reason why some textbooks don't even show you this equation, they just show you the procedure. Now, you should not try to memorize this formula. There's just way too much going on, not the least of which is that this term and that term look almost the same, but they're not quite the same because that has a minus sign, so not only do you have to remember both of them, you have to remember which one goes where, and so on and so forth. If you're committed to memorizing this formula anyway, let me suggest an alternative version. 
The advantage of this version is these two terms are the same. So it might be a little easier to remember. So let's do an example. So we have P equals 3, Q equals 5. First step, find the integrating factor. There it is. Next step, solve the blue integral. Last step, put the integral into there and finish it off. And there is your solution. You can see that this integration constant is important, so don't forget it. So what about that procedure? Well, let's start with uh, this version of the formula. So what do we do with this? Well, let's try taking the derivative of everything with respect to x. What do you get when you do that? Well, the right side is easy, because the derivative just cancels out the integration. So you get this. What about the left side? Well, notice that we have a product. We have y being multiplied by this exponential function. And of course, a product calls for the product rule. So this will basically be f, and then this exponential function will be g. So then we'll get f prime g plus f g prime. So there's f prime, also known as y prime. There's g. And there's f, also known as y. And then going to multiply by the derivative of g, the derivative of an exponential function always gets you the same exponential function back, but then you have to do the chain rule on the exponent and the derivative of the integral of p is just going to be p, because again, the derivative cancels the integral. Notice that we have a y prime and a y. So this is starting to look a lot like a differential equation. In fact, it is a differential equation. Notice also that this term is repeated over and over again. And that term is the integrating factor. If we divide everything by the integrating factor, we get this, which of course should look familiar. So the procedure for solving this differential equation is simply to do what I did here, but in reverse. So you start with this, you get the integrating factor, and you multiply everything by the integrating factor, and then you integrate. On the right side, you just have to integrate whatever you've got there. But on the left side, you're automatically set up to be in this f prime g plus f g prime format. So you can just immediately write what the antiderivative of that is, just f times g. So you solve this integral and then divide by the integrating factor and you're done. So let's do an example. Step one, find the integrating factor. There it is. Step two, multiply your differential equation by the integrating factor. Step three, integrate. On the left side, you're all set to go because you're already in this product rule format. There's your G, there's your F. So the left side becomes, and the right side, you have to actually integrate. Finally, divide everything by the integrating factor.
So of course these integrals were relatively easy because I chose simple values for p and q. When you're doing this yourself, you will probably be spending most of your time and energy in just solving the integrals. In particular, if q is a function of x, then this integral will probably require you to integrate by parts or do something else even more elaborate. So if you got something out of that, please like and subscribe. Also, you should know that I am available for tutoring online in physics and calculus, including obviously differential equations. You can find a link to my website in the description down below. And here are some more uh, videos that I've done on the subject of differential equations.